Hello, my name's Faye and this is Faye's Parallel Stories and I've really been slacking on wrapping up what I've been reading so now I thought on the last day of March I would wrap up both February and March. For both months I have four books in physical copy but all in all I read 11 books so yeah I'll just share this chair with my pretty dog and start. So the very first book I read in February way back when I ended up giving four out of five stars and I feel like everyone read this as a teenager. It's Flowers for Algernon by Daniel Keyes, is that how you pronounce him? Anyway, this book was written in 1959, I believe, and um, is all about this treatment that our main character Charlie gets to increase his IQ, essentially. It's some kind of neurological procedure, they don't go into detail, um, and whilst he is below average in the beginning of the book, he you know, vastly shoots over what is normal for humans. Um, it's really interesting because you can see in the writing how that changes. In the beginning there's lots of sort of errors, both in spelling and in grammar, and that then uh, gets less and less whilst his intelligence increases. Um, but it's not just about intelligence as this sort of almost useless human quality but also about sort of morals and what it means to be a good person and um, also how his intellect vastly outweighs his sort of emotional experiences he's made and how that is almost too much to reconcile within one brain. I really liked it. Um, there were some aspects that I thought were a little heavy-handed, um, but all in all I really recommend it. Most people I believe read this in high school, but I so far never had, and I do think it's nice reading like a science fiction classic. Then in February I read a digital, like a Kindle book, why I'm making that so complicated. I read Jasmine Guillory's The Royal Holiday, which is the third or fourth fourth I think in her series and unfortunately I didn't love this one so this is like a romance series which is very much sort of like a pleasure read for me on the whole and it was still like fluffy and airy and easy to read but this one centers around two slightly more mature characters um the main character I'm blanking on her name maybe Vivian <laughs> travels to the UK with her daughter for the Christmas holidays because her daughter is a personal stylist and she has been hired by the royal family and Vivian the mother um starts this love affair fling holiday fling with the sort of personal secretary to the queen um malcolm is that his name uh, people apparently hate it when you forget names i forget names like that um also in real life sorry um and first i was really pumped to read about a slightly older couple but Unfortunately, it really ended up bugging me, there was less sex on the page. And now you could just say, yeah right Faye, you want a lot of sex on the page. And whilst you would not be wrong, I was especially disappointed that for some reason it was less sexy and that sort of unfortunately cor correlated with an older couple because, you know, sexy times can happen there just as much as with the sort of like 20, 30 somethings that were the main characters in the first Jasmine Guillory books in that series. So that was a bit of a bummer. Also the uh, like apparent obstacle that they have to overcome at the end uh, was just ridiculous and really like weak. So two out of five stars, two still two stars because I just like her writing and I do like how uh, like the question of being black isn't brushed over on the page. I do like that. Um, but yeah, just a bit weird. Also maybe weird reading a like Christmas book in February. But you know, I had difficulty letting go of Christmas. Then, drastically changing genres, I read When I Hit You by Minda Kandasami. Now this has loads of stickers on the front because it was shortlisted for the Women's Prize Fiction uh, for fiction in 2018. Whatever. I get distracted by stickers. This was excellent. I gave it five out of five stars. Apparently the author has had personal experience with domestic abuse and this is a uh, very, even though it's fictionalized, it reads as a very, very personal recollection of one woman and the domestic and sexual abuse 
she experiences in her marriage to a professor and it's really interesting how um, they they come from both very academic intellectual backgrounds and stereotypically that's not what you associate with domestic abuse so I thought that was strong in the setup of this story um, but also just the way the story sort of unfolds and at the same time it has a painfully slow pace that just keeps on escalating the violence experienced um, and at the same time um, we 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 how do I describe this the time frame of the story is kind of confusing so it starts off with her returning in her parents home um, and then we sort of go both backwards and forwards, I guess. I'm making this more complicated than it needs to be, but it is also slightly confusing on the page, but you get into it. Um, there's some really horrible scenes in this, obviously. Um, and yeah, I just like highly, highly recommend it. I am distracted by the back of it now, um, because I don't remember where, where the story is set. Um, yeah, maybe also funny, uh, funny, not like funny, haha, -ha, but, um, the like the political uh ideals of the husband are also dis discussed quite a bit in this book he's sort of a self-proclaimed marxist and um that's also really fascinating how he abuses sort of communist ideas to either fit with being violent towards his wife whilst that's how they bonded to begin with like they meet because he's a professor and she's interested in the similar themes and um sorry i have to uh, scooch over for my dog uh, <laughs> and that, that that's just really really cool how you can slowly see this very intelligent man just losing sight of what he's actually fighting for and representing in his sort of ideals and his teachings excellent book then uh, I read Behind Her Eyes by Sarah Pinborough. Um, this is a thriller, as the cover just sort of clearly denotes. Um, and we have three characters, Louise, David, Adele. I didn't memorize that, it says on the back. And Louise is a single mother living in London and she um, starts an affair with David. And she also befriends David's wife. So we have this menage a trois, sort of in a way, um, and she's caught in the middle and of course everything is much more complicated than you think in the beginning. You, because if you've read the odd sort of domestic thriller, you always kind of find yourself asking yourself which one is the unreliable character in this story. Um, and I reckon I liked this much of the book a lot and the end I hate it uh, so th this is like very highly advertised as having a shocking twist um, amazing ending never saw it coming and sure I didn't see it coming but only because I thought that would be ridiculous and then it did happen so I, I don't know some people love this some people also love the twist there's sort of I guess without wanting to give too much away like slightly fantastical elements nothing out there like this is still like a, your box standard thriller um but yeah because of the ending this really fell flat for me I'm glancing down oh apparently I gave it three out of five stars um because you know this much can't be ruined by this much but I would be curious to hear what other people have to say about this ending who have read it and then I don't have to spoil it. So, ah, disappointing. And then the final book I won't go into too much length about because it's in German. It's by an author called Alice Hasters. Um, and it's weiße, was weiße Menschen nicht über Rassismus hören wollen, aber wissen sollten. So basically translated what white people um, don't want to hear about racism but should. And this sort of piggybacks on quite a few books that have been written on this topic, but I was curious to read it because it's a German author and I do get a lot of these books through the American lens and whilst there's nothing wrong with that and many of them are fascinating, um, I live in Germany, I am German, so I was excited to have a bit more of a German perspective. 
and that was cool but in many ways I think the author is just too similar to me. We have we are born in the same year, I believe, 1989. Um, a lot of the pop culture references are like, yep, spot on. I danced to uh, the Spice Girls. Check. Um, yes, probably the same year. We both changed from like super skinny jeans to baggy jeans. Like, yes, done all that. Um, and in a way, like that made it fun and enjoyable. But there was also nothing that rubbed me up or made me think or had me sort of stumped at some point so it was all just a little bit too expected and maybe that is just because it's expected to me someone else might enjoy this a little bit more um she does in the beginning say there are other books on the topic um and she in the beginning wondered whether she should even bother writing a book like this and then she did decide like wait a minute no yes there is just a personal experience that is legitimate and should be out there and of course i agree um two views on the same topic will still talk to different people but i just think this view didn't give me that much um, but it was easy to read so if anyone out there is learning German or improving on their German this could also be a fun idea because the different parts of it are um, really quite easily digestible both in content and language. And that was the last book I read in February and because I've been a, such a snooze unwrapping all of this up I will just um, move the pages in my bullet journal and talk about the books that I read in March. I believe they're five, six, six. Hmm. Okay, so first book I listened to was Down Among the Sticks and Bones by Sean McGuire, which I was shocked to give five out of five stars. This is the second book in the Wayward Children series. I think she's still writing more and they're all quite short. Um, and Firstly, I like the narration narration, narration of the audiobook, um, which is important. And so this series is always about different characters and children who ended up, you know, going into that wardrobe, falling down the rabbit hole, uh, going away with the hot air balloon into magical and mystical worlds and how that sort of basically traumatizes them for when they um, return back to the normal world. Um, and whilst the fall, whoop, 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 I'll try that again, shall I? Whilst the first book is set in a sort of boarding school for these kids who can't really act normally in society anymore, the second book follows Jack and Jill, two girl twins, and their adventure. And a really considerable chunk of the book is about them growing up and the sort of gendered expectations thrust upon them by their overachieving parents and how the father was expecting a boy and the mother was expecting a girl and then you know they're doomed to have two girls so one of them inadvertently is turned into the tomboy um, and one has to be the uber princessy perfect girl and that then really influences both their relationship with each other with their environments and then also the experience they have in the world that they end up traveling to and i really liked that i thought that was a real strength i also i mentioned that in the vlog that i did when i was reading this book as part of the fan fan tale um readathon i also mentioned how it's really rare to read a story of parents who are only having children because they have to not because they want to and i thought that was refreshing not like you know an upbeat happy thing to read about but really again a valid thing to read about and maybe also a push to think about if you want children and why you want children this is just the pl the blueprint society is enforcing on you um or not and and i do also think it is something you should think about if you have children if you're planning on having children um what kind of gender roles do you have entrenched in your mind and are you able to not pass that on to your child maybe ideally i mean this is easy for me to say i'm oblivious i don't have kids so i can just be like yes i would never do that um but yeah i i really appreciated that view then the second book you could argue was also for a slightly younger audience although i don't know read what you want to read what is age 
it's Exodus by Julie Bertania, that was it. Um, so this, even though the name didn't mean much to me and sounds sort of French, it was written in English. And this is a sort of mashup of sort of post-apocalyptic climate fiction, dystopia, sci-fi, fantasy, blah, 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 road trip. Um, and loads happens. So many like different scenes, different characters as we follow our main character, a teenage girl, um, Mara, Mara, um, from her home village that basically she has to flee from with all the other inhabitants because the water is rising. This is set, I believe, 100 years in the future and the climate catastrophe that we are predicting now has taken place and uh, humans basically have to scramble to find dry land. Um, so this whole plot I thought was excellent. Apparently this is a bit of a thing, like uh, science fiction and dystopian novels centered around like climate change, uh, which is not surprising. Um, but unfortunately, because she wanted to put so much into this, some of it was sort of skimmed over a bit. Also, there's a love story in here that I did not care about. Not that it was bad, just I, I thought it was really unnecessary. So that annoyed me. Um, so what did I end up giving this? I have to glance down because I don't actually remember. Three out of five stars because so much was good, but also so much was sort of weak in its execution. So I'm more disappointed than anything. Um, also like, wow, some like heavy stuff happens in this. So even though when I started reading this, I was sort of thinking like, oh yeah, this could be read by a 14 year old. Of course it can be read by a 14 year old, but you know, a 14 year old that can deal with like her best friend dying of disease and malnourishment because they're refugees in the beginning of the book. Yeah. Then I read Blood Ties by Ben Crane. This, oh, damn, also sort of disappointed me. This had me written all over it. This is nonfiction about his love for falconry. He's um, from the UK and he, uh, if, if I understood correctly, uh, saves uh, especially goshawks uh, and pe pe pepples them up, that's a German word, I don't know, makes them healthy again and hunts for them and finally releases them to the wild. So all of that is super super cool and had me thinking of H's for Hawk, especially because this is the thing I love most about nonfiction. That side of it, so this nature nonfiction, is paired with his estranged relationship to his young son, who he up and left when he was born because he was overwhelmed by the whole situation. Ben Crane is somewhere on the autistic spectrum, he says so himself, and says that the whole situation of losing control in the hospital, everything, everyone wanting something from him, him not getting time to adjust to his role of a father just totally overwhelmed him. Um, and I thought those two things could be married amazingly in one book. Unfortunately, this feels like 80% falconry, 20% my relationship with my son. Um, also, those 20% are all sort of bunched towards the end. So there's an imbalance there. And the parts that he writes about his son almost feel a bit superficial. There are some really nice scenes in this, but on the whole, he gets really like nerdy and in detail about falconry and the history and culture around it. Um, but when it comes to his son, it's just sort of like jump cut scenes that he experiences with him, which maybe actually illustrates that there just isn't much of a relationship at the beginning of the book. But still, I wanted more of the emotional meat there and would have been okay with a few less pages devoted to making bells that you can at attach to a falcon so you can hear where he goes missing. Yeah, so maybe something if you're like really interested into any of those topics, but on the whole, I was unfortunately a little bit disappointed. I read another non-fiction book this month. Uh, month. I read Delusions of Gender by Cordelia Fine. So this um, centers around a really interesting aspect, in my opinion, 
when it comes to gender equality. This is all about neurosexism. So this claim that, well, men and women's brains are different. And she basically debunks loads of studies, neuro neurological, neuro, neuro psychiatric studies. Oh my God, I'm making up words here. Um, and also shockingly talks of some more sort of like pop culture books that are really influential on this topic that really quote studies incorrectly overgeneralize for instance there are cases where they talk about gender differences and then they will reference to a study that was made that was only made with women for instance so how can you talk about gender difference if you only have the brain imagery of one gender? So this was aggravating and frustrating at times. The author is very witty, which I, which was refreshing in such a sort of like, mm, like, you know, factual, hard, but also aggravating topic. Um, but I realize that this is maybe like, me reading this is totally the equivalent of just standing in the echo chamber and giving it a good go because nothing in here was something that I would disagree with, which, you know, made me feel super self-righteous, but I'm not sure how much I actually learned, but I did enjoy it. Therefore, I gave it four out of five stars. And then the worst possible book to end on, but this is the last one I read this month, was Her Body and Other Parties by Carmen Maria Machado. And this, I was so disappointed about. I've been so excited to read this book. It's a short story collection by this author. Um, it's sort of been pegged as feminist, um, intersectional, um, fantasy, science fiction, surreal, um, fantastical realism, like all the good stuff. I'm usually not a huge fan of short story anthologies, but I like collections by one author. So I was really pumped about this, read the first short story, was in love. So it would have been like a five and a half out of five stars book, only going by the first story. And the rest, I really didn't vibe with. Um, there's one in the middle which I really disliked, like actually disliked, which is a sort of weird, uh, almost, well the format is her summarising um, Law and Order episodes and sort of twisting them in a sort of fantasy story way. It just like really didn't work for me, it goes on for far too long. And then some are just sort of like weird, but not weird as in sort of the tiny subgenre in um, science fiction, but just, are you just trying to be like mm, complicated here or moody here? Like her characters are all really similar, which you could say ties together the short stories, but for me, like, a, like, not convincing thing tying together the short stories is not much of a gain. I really, really want to go back and look at other people's reviews of this because from what I remember sort of reading and watching other people say, I was so excited to read this and this is, like, really disappointing to me. I, the first story was amazing. Uh, the story of a wife who has a ribbon ab around her neck. She has a very happy marriage and the ribbon around her neck is the only thing she doesn't want her husband ever to touch. That's the short story. Um, I'm so sad. So sad. And that was the last book I read in March. So overall, a good mix of things, all the way from two stars, which in my book is, in my books, <laughs> is a book that I don't enjoy that much or that I do have some fault with. One star I only really give to like stuff where I'm like, yeah, shit, I shouldn't have finished that. Um, but from two stars all the way to five star reads in the last two months, I hope you are staying safe and healthy and I'll see you very soon. Bye.